Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlock big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we'll unlock the book The Body Keeps the Score, Brain, Mind, and Body in the Healing of Trauma. Let's first hear a story. Marilyn was a tall athletic-looking woman in her mid-thirties who worked as a nurse. She met a fireman named Michael while playing tennis at the sports club, and the two began a relationship. They often talked about tennis and movies together. Marilyn said that she usually avoided men, but this relationship gradually made her feel comfortable. As they got closer, one Saturday evening, Marilyn invited Michael to stay over at her apartment. She described feeling uptight and unreal as soon as they were alone together, having very little sense of what would happen next. After a few glasses of wine and several episodes of a TV show, they fell asleep together in bed. At around two in the morning, when they were fast asleep, Michael turned over. When Marilyn felt his body touch hers, she exploded, pounding him with her fists, scratching and biting, screaming, you bastard, you bastard. Michael startled awake, grabbed his belongings and fled. After he left, Marilyn felt deeply humiliated and hated herself for what she had done. So she turned to the therapist Bessel van der Kolk for help in dealing with her terror of men and her inexplicable rage attacks. So why did Marilyn act like that? After several treatments, van der Kolk found that Marilyn had never been able to let go of her childhood experience of sexual assault by her father. In fact, on many occasions, even if things have changed and time has long passed, we may still go out of control due to some tiny danger signals that trigger our horrible memories. People often think that it's all in one's head, but the book The Body Keeps the Score suggests that psychological trauma actually has a physiological basis. So what are the physical and psychological effects of trauma? What does the body have to do with trauma? How can it be treated? This book will give us the answers. The author of this book is Bessel van der Kolk, who is the world's best-known master of trauma treatment. He is the founder and medical director of the Trauma Center in Brookline in the United States, a professor of psychiatry at Boston University Medical School and director of the National Complex Trauma Treatment Network. With more than 30 years of experience in cutting-edge research and clinical practice in the field of psychological trauma, he is an expert in both medication and psychotherapy, with a creative insight on trauma. He also frequently conducts in-depth exchanges and cooperation with all the founders of major trauma treatments in the United States. As one of the authorities in the field of psychological trauma treatment, his theory has greatly influenced the mainstream approaches to trauma treatment today. In this bookie, you will embark on a three-part journey of learning about trauma and its healing. Part 1, The Physical and Mental Symptoms of Trauma Part 2, The Physiology Behind the Unforgettable Trauma Part 3, Tradition and Innovation in the Field of Trauma Treatment Let's look at Part 1, The Physical and Mental Symptoms of Trauma Psychological trauma is a difficult topic to deal with, often filled with indescribable anger, shame, fear, violence, and all intense emotions that we are unwilling to touch. Generally speaking, psychological trauma refers to the abnormal physical, mental, and emotional states caused by severe traumatic events. This abnormal state can be cured automatically after a period of self-adjustment, but the effects of some psychological trauma can last longer or even a lifetime. For severe psychological trauma, it is defined as post-traumatic stress disorder in the classification of psychological and psychiatric disorders. Let's start with the earliest stage of life, childhood, and see what far-reaching damages early trauma can leave us physically and mentally. When we enter this world as an infant, it is our mother who nurtures us with sweet milk and touches us with gentle fingers. The intimate skin-to-skin -skin contact makes the baby feel extremely warm and safe. During this time, the mother satisfies almost all the needs of the baby and they form an initial attachment. 
Based on thousands of hours of observations of mother-child behavior, American scientist Ainsworth concluded that to meet their own basic needs, children develop three attachment patterns, secure attachment, avoidant attachment, anxious or ambivalent attachment. Whether the attachment is secure or not makes a huge difference in children's emotional development over the course of their lives. So let's see how the three patterns of attachment develop. By observing the interactions between children and their mothers, the researchers found that children will develop a secure attachment when their needs are taken care of and satisfied promptly and carefully, and when there are positive interactions and responses between the children and the mothers. Children growing up in this environment are optimistic, confident, emotionally stable, and physically healthy. On the contrary, if the mother is always distant and indifferent to the child's emotions, often ignoring to satisfy the child's needs, the child will feel that they are unworthy of love and develop an avoidant attachment. Children with an avoidant attachment also show neglect and indifference to their caregivers, and they are emotionally closed off. Their chronically increased heart rates show that they are in a constant state of hyperarousal, which has a series of negative effects on the growth and development of children. Finally, children with an anxious or ambivalent attachment pattern often come from an environment with unstable emotional nurturing. If they behave well, parents will love them and satisfy them. If they misbehave, parents will reprimand and pick on them. Children with this attachment pattern easily get anxious, agitated, aggressive, and often have a weak immune system. In recent years, Research on childhood trauma has found that long-term neglect, separation, abandonment, and other emotional abuses, as well as physical abuse can cause psychological trauma in children. The book points out that this kind of trauma is actually a disruption of a secure attachment. A secure attachment is the child's inner sense of safety. Failing to develop secure attachment in children will leave them with a vulnerable physiology, leading to many physiological problems such as low heart rate variability, increased stress hormone activity, sleep disorders, unexplainable pains, and hypersensitivity to touch and sound. At the same time, those who do not feel safe in their early childhood will have difficulty in controlling their emotions and reactions when they grow up. They tend to have various mental problems, such as unstable self-awareness, repeated self-injury and suicidal impulse, attention and cognition deficit, depression, frequent interpersonal tensions, and so on. These are all the post-traumatic stress disorders caused by impaired attachment. More importantly, the early experiences will run through and affect our lives through adulthood. Having a strong sense of security and warm memories of protection in childhood is crucial to preventing mental and social problems throughout our life. The book cites a study by Dr. Robert Onda, which identified child abuse as the gravest and most costly public health issue in the United States, with overall costs exceeding those of cancer or heart disease. The study concluded that eradicating child abuse in America would reduce the overall rate of depression by more than half, alcoholism by two-thirds, and suicide, four drug use, and domestic violence by three-quarters. Besides the trauma caused by improper parenting practices in the early years, Car accidents, major diseases, and war experiences in later years will also cause severe trauma. Tom is a veteran who had been on the battlefield in Vietnam. Although he had left the battlefield for over 10 years and had become a successful lawyer, National Day was the most painful day for him. The noise, the fireworks, the heat, and the dense summer foliage, all of which reminded him of Vietnam, would drive him crazy. When he got upset, he was afraid to be around his family, because he behaved like a monster with his wife and two young boys. What's more, his mind often flashed back an image of being ambushed in the jungle, Tom was on patrol with his companions. Suddenly a hail of gunfire spurted from the green wall of the surrounding jungle, hitting the men around him one by one. All the members of his platoon were killed or wounded in a matter of seconds. His best friend Alex died in the rice paddy with his face down, his feet in the air. He would never get the bloody image out of his mind. 
Tom's trauma is rooted in the memory of war that was lingering in his brain. The sound of the popping of firecrackers on the 4th of July would remind him of the sound, smell, and images of the ambush, and made him feel paralyzed, terrified, enraged, and ashamed again and again. After so many years, the scenes on the battlefield in Vietnam still entangled him like a nightmare, making him completely unable to enjoy his present life to the fullest. Van der Kolk found that people who have experienced war are especially at high risk of going out of control emotionally. Tom often flew instantly into extreme rages because of some tiny triggers. He could only calm down when he was completely drunk or riding a motorcycle at high speed. The only thing he could do was to numb himself with liquor or go motorcycle racing to calm himself down. In addition to uncontrollable rages, the worst symptom of trauma in war veterans is emotional numbness. Tom desperately wanted to love his family, but he just couldn't evoke any deep feelings for them. He felt emotionally distant from everybody. He felt alive only when he threw himself into work. Finally, trauma also confuses perception and damages the imagination. Patients often suffer from auditory and visual hallucinations, which could be misdiagnosed as a case of paranoid schizophrenia. They are tormented by painful past experiences that always pull them back to the intense involvement and emotions of the past, making them unable to perceive and envision a new life. The book The Traumatic Neuroses of War describes war trauma in which the victims became withdrawn and detached, even if they had socially functioned well before the war. These were called traumatic neuroses. Today we call them post-traumatic stress disorders, PTSD. Victims develop a chronic vigilance for and sensitivity to threat. Some people often suppose it is all in one's head. But the author emphasizes that this is a post-traumatic stress response, and that it has a physiological basis. These post-traumatic symptoms have their origin in the entire body's response to the original trauma. In the early 1990s, new neuroimaging techniques helped us better understand the effects of trauma on the brain and physiology. When researchers scanned trauma patients' brain, they found that when the simulated scenes from traumatic events were recreated, the intense emotions activated the brain's alarm system, the amygdala. It is well known that activation of amygdala triggers the release of a series of stress hormones and nerve impulses, driving up adrenaline blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen intake, preparing the body for fight or flight. It can be seen that even years after the traumatic experience, the body keeps the score. Those horrors and threats and painful memories will flash back to real life at any time. Everyone has memories, but the memories of traumatized people are different from the normal memories we have when we recount everyday events from the past. Traumatic memories are fragmentary, dissociated, flashback, and messy. They are the dark sides that people are unwilling to touch in life. These memories exist on the subconscious level, and the brain especially retains the memories of insult and injuries very well. The more adrenaline the body secretes, the more precise the memory will be. As a result, when traces of memories such as sounds and images are reactivated, people automatically relive the same emotions, sensations, and feelings they experienced in a traumatic event. The lives of trauma patients are often in a dual state, leaving them unable to distinguish the present from the past. They cannot enjoy the real life in the present to the fullest. The scar from the traumatic experience changed everything about them. That concludes the first part the physical and mental symptoms of trauma. To sum up, there are three patterns of attachment that people develop in their early childhood, secure attachment, avoidant attachment, anxious or ambivalent attachment. An insecure attachment can have long-term physical and mental effects. Besides childhood experience, traumatic experiences such as car accidents, major diseases, and war experiences can also cause post-traumatic stress disorders. These manifest in the loss of self, emotional numbness, and distortion of perception and imagination. These symptoms have a physiological basis, that is they are essentially responses of the entire body to traumatic events. Then, what is the physiological process behind an unforgettable trauma? 
Let's move on to the second part. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.